going to be wow. a great Christmas over there. My mom's not too upset about it. She understands I'm going back to live with a, uh, have Christmas with the family that I lived with for a while. So everything's good. Oh, that's good. pretty nice. Now, how, how is your family doing? Okay. They're, yeah, they are. <laughs> they're, I, I laugh because of my. Uh, you sound surprised. <laughs> no, they're doing great. They're doing great. They're just, uh, I, they're, they're, they're crazy as always. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're great. Okay. But uh, mom's good. I cannot keep up with her. She's 75, traveling the world with her boyfriend, CJ. Brother Rooster <laughs> just had a, uh, uh, a baby boy, a son. What? Your mother's 75, just had a baby boy? No, what? my brother Rooster. Oh, I see. Who's 53, just Wait had a baby boy. Wait a minute, hang on. Your brother boy. Rooster? Yes. That's another story for another well, how second. How does it go? We, got a, we, we have Matthew and then Matthew, Rooster. Matthew, there's, then there's Pat in the Pat, middle. And then Rooster. He's 43, and then there's Rooster, who's 53. He had a son. Um, <laughs> name is, name, now, named him Miller Light. Miller, Miller Light. Miller Light McConaughey. So we've got good generation. <laughs> okay, how? Are we talking double wide or triple wide trailer here? Yeah. Double. 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 Oh, double. Just double, man. Just double. We you don't, don't, don't want to be putting on air. Take it easy. One story, double wide. So, Rooster, this is my son, Miller Light. Oh, yes. there you go. All right. There you go. <laughs> now, how about mom for Christmas? What'd you do there? Uh, we set up mom with an iPod, one of those nanos. Yeah. She's, you know, been carrying her flash dance CD and her. And her, and her, and her <laughs> And Oliver Bob Seeger, and she's been carrying this around for for a long time. So we dropped all of her music down. We stole it from her house, yeah. dropped it all down to a nano. So we have a thousand of her favorite songs on a little nano. She knows how to work it, so she can go pedal her bike and hike and walk around. She has all her music on her nano now. You know, I'm beginning to understand you better now that I realize your family. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you take mom to these red carpet events, dude? Do you do that kind of thing with her? Yes. Does she like I, to do those? Oh, yeah. God, does she like it. Yeah. My mother on the red carpet, um, yeah, becomes the, the, the K-Mac show, not, not, <laughs> not my show, man. She, uh, she, she loves to do interviews on the red carpet, yeah. long ones. Yeah. Long ones. <laughs> Personal ones. Yeah. You know? Because the guy who's asking the questions is so nice, they'll tell you anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Like, do they come to your house, like, when you, when you first started to make it, would, you, would your mom sort of get they, ambushed by guys? And, yes. Yeah. A little bit. Really? So I told her, Mom. Be cool. Let me navigate through this time of my yeah. life on my own right now. Don't allow anyone in the house. Let's keep our family, our family life, personal life, right, personal right, life. Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely, son, I understand. Uh, you know, you just keep doing what you're doing. And next thing I know, I'm looking at whatever, some show at 6 o'clock, and there's my bedroom and a camera. My mom's walking through. And, <laughs> and this is where he slept, and he had a girlfriend named so-and-so. And I caught him in here one night, and I'm going, no, man. <laughs> No! And I call her up and she was like, well, the guy at the door was just so damn nice. <laughs> I'm like, but you, do you now understand you weren't talking to just the guy at the door? I know, I know. They don't, they don't get it. They don't get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Man. She's still doing that, too. That's the thing. I'm watching you. Look. <laughs> we'll take a break. More with Matthew right after this. Be right back. You know, so many awards this time of year, but you got a huge award uh, from, was it InTouch Magazine, Party Animal of the Year? Is that what I read? Is that the... I worked on that one. Did you work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I played on that yeah. one. Yeah, well-deserved? Very well-deserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you really yeah. campaign? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it just kind of happened. You yeah. know, I like to be early there and last yeah. to leave. That's yeah. what I heard. You're always the last to leave. You try to be. If it's yeah. good music, yeah. thank you. If it's good yeah. music, <laughs> you can keep that going. I'd love to be the last to leave. Yeah, somebody told me they were at some function you are, and you kept... <laughs> were, were you paying money or something? I've, bands have made a lot more money than they made for playing the gig that night right. off of the money that I paid them to keep playing after really? they were supposed to be done. So, so those, and <laughs> when that works into, there's been a couple of charity um, found organizations where we yeah. had parties that night, and then I'm, you know, three in the morning, I'm like, I'll pay $1,000 for every song we can play from here on out. <laughs> Next morning, you got a $16,000 check that you're going, all right, that's why it was sunrise when we went to bed, because we jammed all night. But it was worth it. Yes, oh. yes, man. No, I love good music, man. If, we, if I can find a good place to dance, a good groove, I will stay there all night. Well, that's good. Well, that would make you party animal of the year. Very that's, good. That's good. part of it, man. Now, <laughs> it gets, tell us about this movie, We Are yeah. Marsh. I, again, this is a wonderful film, and I watch, it's, it's a family movie. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a big sports guy, but I watch this movie and I got so into it it's because it's not really about football it's about no, what, football tell people it, what, what it's if you love sports you're gonna love the film yeah uh, but exactly. if, if you got a heartbeat you're gonna you're gonna love the film and I and I can say that honestly man this is the most 
proud film piece of art that I've ever been associated with. The making of it and now to be here. And it's going to come out, you know, the 22nd to be presenting it. 1970, 75 members of the uh, Marshall University football team and community died instantly in the plane crash. This is a story about the rebuilding of that, about how this, not only this team and this program survived, but how this town survived, how they relied on each other. Right. Um, and how not only did they survive, they started to thrive. I mean, in 1990 to 2005, because they kept this program together, they had extremely, they were very, uh, one of the most winningest college football programs over that 15-year period. Right. Um, at the end of this film, man, man, woman, child, grandmother, whatever, it, you're going to come out feeling how you want to feel, how, 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 you want, how you hope you feel in the holiday season. And that's yeah. why we're coming out now. It's, um, it's been something that's touched a lot of lives of the people in the community there in Huntington. Um, and you shot it in, in, in the, the town. We shot yeah, it in the okay. town with the real people. We were shooting in the locations where these things happen. We were shooting with the Was people there that skepticism were that, you know, oh, a Hollywood crew is going to come and they're going to yes, make this yes, story, man. you know? We show up. Yeah, they, this, this is a tragedy that happens in this town, 40,000 people. And here comes Hollywood to come tell the story. Yes, there was skepticism. Yeah, yeah. They were very wary of us showing up. And uh, how are we going to tell the story? Where are we going to be tell the true story? Which it is a true story, not inspired by and not based right, on. Right. And the producers introduced us well. The director, McGinty, opened his arms, opened the set to the people, opened the script to the people that were, that were there at that time. They came to the set. They, they, they read through scenes. We talked about it. Yeah. Some didn't want to come around. And then finally, after a few weeks, the town sort of became a team with us yeah. in the making of the movie. And, um, it was really special. I and mean, we screened it for the, for the town the other night. We had it on 16 screens. And uh, I can, I can, all I can tell you is that we got a lot of honest thank yous. And it really felt great. It feels great to be a part of something yeah. that matters this much. And to you so look many different. People, you you know? put on some weight for this to play the, the part of the. Yeah, the Jack Lingle, uh, right. the coach. Jack Lingle, who I play you know, here, is, uh, you know, yeah, I'm about 20 pounds heavier in this film than right. I am right now. Uh, this coach, Jack Lingle, he was an outsider. You know, who, 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 who in the hell would want a job like this? You know, the whole football team's gone. There's no coach. There's no athletic director. Right. And this guy from out of town says, I want the job. They didn't call him. He wasn't the final straw. He was the only straw. And he came in, and he was the right man for the job. And he helped rebuild this team. They had to recruit people off the baseball team, the right. band, the Marine Corps. It's a great underdog story yeah. as well. And they weren't were that good. They lost more games in the 70s right. than any team in NCAA. Right. But they kept the program alive. And, they, yeah. and, and it kept the community alive. And like I said, of 1990 to 2005, they were the winningest college football program because they kept it alive at this time. Yeah, and it just had such a great feel. You know, I grew up in a small town, and everything sort of hinged around what happened at the school and the kids. Yeah. And, you know, and so I, I, I really identify with Main Street and the whole feel of it. What, yeah. What's happening in this? this Coach oh, Red Dawson sure. played by Matthew Fox. We have just played our first game, okay, in 1971, and we get our butts kicked. So some of the players and this coach at the time, and this really happened, she quit, walked off the field, said, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. This is just two days before the second game, and I'm coming in trying to get him to come back and be part of the team. Let's take a look. <laughs> Your dad was a football coach, huh? He was a football player. Um, and speaking of pop, this is for you. What is that? Um, mind if I open it for you? No, no, yeah, what do you Yeah, man. Excuse me. Pop, um, just keep living. All right, it's a compass that helps me navigate through life. And this for you, this is the last picture taken of my father two weeks before he passed away. Um, and that's where the just keep living comes from. Oh, cool. Um, that's the name, a company, but hey, it's also thanks. a motto. Well, I will wear that. Thank you, man. Well, thank that's very nice. He was a football player. Um, he was not a coach, but what uh, I got to know him really well in the making of this film because I was a coach and when you coach college kids it's very much like being a, a father figure right. I mean you're more of a teacher than a, than a coach actually with this with this young kids and um, sometimes you got to be a big brother to them sometimes yeah. you got to give them tough love yeah. <laughs> kick in the butt and other times they needed an arm around the shoulder and so a lot of it was how my father raised me and my two older brothers is what I was able to to to, to give to the the role right, right. and um, it's also, you know, the whole story. We're going to talk about the inspiration of the story. This is very much a just keep living story we, we, we got here and we got to tell. And so, I'm, I'm, like I said earlier, man, it's the most gratifying work experience I've had well, personally and 
co-worker. Well, well, it's a terrific film, and it opens uh, opens tomorrow, right? It opens, sure does. We are Marshall. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. And thank you for my shirt. Be right back with Opie and Anthony right after.